Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Shane, and today I'm just with Steven. Say what up, dude. Hey, man. It is day three, three, four, five, six, one. It's one of the spoiler days, right? I don't know what day it is. I mean, there's it's a lot a of spoiler them. day. We got more Wilds of Eldraine to talk about. Instead of going through every single card spoiled, we're just going to go through the rares and mythics. But if you do want to see every card that has been spoiled, you can always follow us on our Instagram, just at Guys of Magic. We post every single card that's spoiled. But for this video, we're just going to talk about the big boys. Starting with the man land. This is Restless Spire. It enters the battlefield tapped. You could tap it for a blue or a red. You could also pay a blue and a red until end of turn, Restless Spire becomes a 2 1 blue and red elemental creature with, as long as it's your turn, this creature has first strike. It's still a land. Whenever Restless Spire attacks, scry one. There's a lot going on in this card, dude, for it being a land. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, but I do enjoy it. I mean, I don't like the fact that it comes in tapped. I do love the artwork here. I like the artwork. I like, uh, it getting first strike on your turn, so you're probably going to trade. That seems really good. Scrying every time it attacks seems really good. There's no real evasion, so you got to be mean, careful. I mean, 2-1 with, one with first strike is pretty solid, dude. In standard, that is definitely notable. I mean, I think in standard, this is going to probably be a menace if I'm honest with you. I mean, right now, you know, from the videos I watch from the other creators from Magic the Gathering, I just see a lot of board wipes with Sunfall and probably, like, farewells and all that kind of jazz and depopulates, so... Having a land that, if you don't have anything to do with your turn, you can just pay two mana, get a little first striker after a board wipe. I think this is pretty good. And I think the really cool thing, too, is like, let's say it is kind of late game and you are using this to try and get some card advantage. You know, when you attack with it, you get the scry. So if there's like a crappy land on top, boom, get rid of it. Get out of here, guy. I definitely agree. It coming in tapped is probably the worst part about it, but I think like all man lands, I got to come in tapped. Oh, for sure, dude. Can you imagine this just coming in untapped and then just making it a 2 1? No, it'd be, it'd be a little crazy. All right, moving on. We got Spiteful Hexmage for one black mana. It is a 3-2 human warlock. It says when it enters the battlefield, create a cursed roll token attached to a target creature you control. Again, dude, how are these rolls going to play out? Cause I don't know. I don't know. So I think this is a really cool card. Um, whether we're doing anything, you know, EDH related, you know, kind of doing like the Rakdos, steal your opponent stuff and then make it a 1-1 kind of deal. Uh, or I actually do kind of think this is going to be pretty solid in standard too. You know, in standard, yeah. there's tons of ways to make tokens, and they're pretty much one ones already. So getting a one drop to put down and then get a token to be that curse token, it's not going to be that bad, man. It would be kind of a bummer though, putting this on turn one, right? Because you're going to be forced to put that roll token on itself, right? Is that how that works? Yes. So that would be how it works. So it, yeah. you literally would have to put it on this. So this would be a very unfortunate, you know, turn one drop. I don't think anyone's okay, going to yeah. be doing a turn one drop with it, but still. Seems pretty aggressive, though. One black mana, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, next up, we got Raging Battle Mouse. One and a red for a 2-1 mouse. The second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. It also has Celebration. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. What do we think? I think this is garbage. <laughs> hey, but it's a cute little mouse. The card itself, the second spell you cast each turn costing one less, I mean, that could be good for, what, dealing damage to face, I guess, in a mono red? Maybe I even mean, in a, is it? I don't, I don't know if this, this goes into a mono red deck. I mean, yeah, the second spell you cast costs one less, but, like, most of the spells in red, like, if you have four lands, it's too much, you know what I mean? So I think this won't really slot into a mono red deck. I think this kind of goes into, like, an is it? kind of deck you know what i mean like a spell slinger but yeah i i don't i don't really enjoy it and i don't think i would actually play this well think about this dude on turn three you could potentially play two different two mana cost spells right so you could play on turn three this and then your second spell if it was like one in a red you could just do another one that could be pretty crazy yeah i mean don't get me wrong like i see the utility here i just i don't <laughs> I don't think I care about it enough. Like I read the card and the celebrations just kind of like flavor text to me. Really, the only thing I care about is the second spell you cast each turn. But this also has to survive, and this is a pretty good target for any kind of like mono black or mono white kind of like removal. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm thinking this is probably gonna be some kind of tempo based deck going Agreed. on. But yeah, interesting card. Next we got Charming Scoundrel, one and a red for a one one human rogue. They have haste, and it says when they enter the battlefield, choose one, discard a card, then draw a card. Create a treasure token. Create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. What is a wicked roll? Uh, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and whenever this aura is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So it doesn't really affect until you put another roll on that creature? Is that what's happening? 
or whenever that creature dies. Oh, true, true, true. Because it'll oh. hit the battle. It'll hit the graveyard. Do we think this is a good card? I mean, you. Get I think the... this is a great card. Draw a card di or discard a card. Draw a card or a treasure token. Yeah, I honestly actually think this actually slots into a mono red deck. I'm not gonna lie yeah. to you. It's got For... that card filtration. You know, worst yeah. case, you need a treasure token. Or if you just want to give one of your creatures an extra 1-1 one, one worth of damage, plus this has haste. Like, I think this is fantastic. This does do a lot for you. Two mana. Yeah. The haste team's interesting. Like, what? Because it's like a 1-1. One, one. So you're probably not going to be attacking this unless they have an open board. And you don't need to tap it to activate any of those abilities. The haste comes kind of seems weird. Eh. I'll take it. I'll take it all day. Yeah. The next card we're going to talk about is Archon of the Wild Rose. It's two and two white for a 4-4 four, four Archon. They have flying, and it says, other creatures you control that are enchanted by auras you control have base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and have flying. Okay, now that's pretty powerful, right? I mean, this is very aggressive, especially after seeing, like, all these cards with basically, you know, create, hashtag, whatever role. Roll, uh, yeah. I think this is going to be <laughs> a menace, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I can imagine any of those creatures that just create an aura as a, or create a role as it enters the battlefield. Now those will have flying and base power 4-4. Four, four. That's kind of crazy, dude. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's super solid. I like this card. I wonder if the guys will like this card, too. I feel like Hunter would. I think Hunter and David would love this card. I mean, this really does take a certain type of play to where if you just have, like, a ton of little 1-1s one on your board and you just play this and those 1-1s... One Actually, I'm kind of curious now. So, like, the curse token, it has base power, toughness, 1-1, one, one, but with this... Does that, that kind of change right? it? Yeah, maybe. I think it's a replacement, right? Yeah. So there'd be four fours and flying. Doesn't really seem like a bad curse to me. Not at all, man. But this card seems really cool, so I like it. Next card we're going to talk about, Hilda's Crown of Winter. It is three mana for a legendary artifact. You can pay one, tap it, tap target creature. This ability costs one less to activate during your turn. You can also pay three, sacrifice Hilda's Crown of Winter, draw a card for each tapped creature your opponent's control. Kind of seems like it'd go in that that new tappy commander thing we talked about. Yeah, I really do love this. Um, there's also a bunch of tap effects in Magic already. This gets me really excited for slotting this into some EDH decks that I've been working on. Uh, in Standard, I still think this isn't terrible. Obviously, if you're playing a pretty aggro deck and they just swung in with all their creatures, they have a bunch of tapped ones, uh, you know, paying three to sacrifice this. Granted, I mean, you are holding up three mana, whether you're doing it at the end step of that opponent's turn or if you're doing this at the upkeep of yours. You know, I, that's kind of where I'm a little iffy on this, but I do really enjoy it. Dude, and the flexibility of it literally not costing anything if it's your turn, it's really cool. I mean, let's say you want to get in with that one big beater, but they have that stupid chump token. Yeah, I like it. You could do that, and then if you had the mana later, you could also pay three and sacrifice it since you don't need to tap it. That's, that's a pretty good card. Another pretty interesting card, Rotisserie Elemental. It is one red mana for a 1-1 Elemental. They have Menace. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a Skewer counter on Rotisserie Elemental. Then you may sacrifice it. If you do, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of Skewer counters on Rotisserie Elemental. You may play those cards this turn. It's a lot going on, dude. I kind of like this. Yeah? It's a new interesting counter, dude. Skewer counter. I would say parry, but... Yeah, this is red. <laughs> uh, I think this is going to be pretty strong. Uh, I don't know if it'll slot into mono red, because obviously this doesn't have haste, and it doesn't really deal any damage when it comes down. But having this as a one-drop in standard with Menace, and your opponent either has to just destroy it or take that damage that next turn, and then boom, you're kind of heading off to the races. I also love the fact that it says you may play those cards, so if you get a land card, you can play that. I think that this is pretty good. Yeah, man. I love all those cards that give you access to like just more stuff so it's not really card draw but pseudo right definitely card you know, advantage. you know what this card would slot in really well tell me foul dorn foul dorn love it dude next card we're gonna talk about is asinine antics it is two and two blue for a sorcery you may cast asinine antics as though it had flash if you pay two or more to cast it for each creature your opponent's control create a cursed roll token attached to that creature do we like this card i I don't like this card. I am falling in love with this card. You're falling in love with this card. This card is so good. It's like a board wipe. It's not a board wipe, right? Yep. So, I mean, obviously you're putting cursed rolls, so their creatures will be base power, you know, 1-1. One, one. 
Uh, so if they do have counters on them, you do have to look out for that. But oh, dude, this is so good. I think really the only unfortunate thing is having to pay six mana for it to have like the instant effect. But for four mana, man, dude, this card's going to be seen in EDH and I guarantee you standard. I think this is going to be another all-star. Yeah, there's like we talked about the last video, the card design in this set seems really cool. I like that. I like the ability, the flexibility of being able to pay a couple extra and do it whenever it's interesting. Plus the flavor of the artwork, asinine, you know, yeah. donkey ass. They're all donkey, it. dude. I like it. This next card we wanted to talk about is Imodane, the Pyro Hammer. Two and two red for a 4-4 four, four human knight. It says, whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature, Imodane deals that much damage to each opponent. Jesus I know Christ. We, I know we don't want to talk too much about commanders, but this seems pretty nutty, dude. It's Jason Bourne. <laughs> That's Jason Bourne. Uh, I like this. I love the fact that this card just has the pyro hammer in the name. <laughs> I mean, I I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, <laughs> I just I this has EDH written all over it, dude. You got a big smile on your face, huh? Yeah, I really do right now. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. This is this card. I I think is really good. You think it's good enough to be played in standard too? Absolutely not. No. I won't lie though. I I don't play a lot of standard, so I mean, it's unfortunate that Hunter's not here. But I mean, for it's tough, right? Because, like, you know, does this go into a mono red deck? You know, I, I don't really think so because it comes down. You have to have four mana. Obviously, two red and mono red's not going to be that big of a deal. But this does have to hit the field, and it doesn't really do anything the turn it comes down unless you have that extra mana to start pumping damage. Very true. So, you know, you have to hope that your opponent doesn't have any removal. Would I play it? Absolutely. But that's because I'm a weird, quirky guy, and I don't really care. <laughs> but in EDH, dude, each opponent taking that damage? Let's go. And then these last two cards we wanted to talk about, these are going to be from the Enchanted Tales. First up, we have Impact Tremors, one and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to the opponent. We've seen this card a billion times, Steven. It's got beautiful new art. I like this card. I love the artwork. I have seen you play this card in your... It was in the Convoke deck. Yeah, and this was just a menace, dude. With some beautiful new art. I might have to be picking this up, dude. Also being printed in the Enchanted Tales, Force Fruition. Four and two blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player draws seven cards. Hmm. Okay. I mean, now that they did that beautiful Nekusar secret layer, I think uh, I think I got an extra card to put in. Yeah, I like the art too. Again, dude, quirky. Yeah, I mean, literally the king's hiding behind there, sitting down in his little chair, and all this food. He's got too much to handle, dude. Too much to handle. Well, that will do it, Stephen. Do you have a favorite out of all of these that we talked about today? A thousand percent asinite antics. Oh yeah, I do like that one as well. I think my favorite ought to be the Arcanine of the Wild Rose. I really like that. It's interesting. I wonder what the guys would pick. Should we pick for them? Yeah, let's pick for him. I'm gonna go ahead and go with Hunter, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, Imidane the Pyro Hammer. I think that would be his favorite. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll pick first David, and I will pick Rotisserie Elemental because David loves eating. Okay. Yeah. But well, that's, that's what we'd like. What about you guys? Leave a comment down below letting us know which is your favorite out of all these. Down in the description, you'll find all of our links to our social medias. That's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. It's all going to be at Guys That Magic. Follow us there, especially Instagram, if you want to see every single spoiled card. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Later.